Hey guys, welcome to our channel. Welcome. My name is Fanta. And it's your man Darwin. Yes, and tomorrow's a very big day for this guy right here. Tomorrow is a huge day because I'm going to have surgery. Which is crazy. It's actually pretty crazy. It's, it's, it's mind blowing. If you're new to this channel or you know if you just stumbled onto this video, I have cancer and tomorrow is the day that they're going to go into my body and remove the cancer. So basically over the past couple months, he's been undergoing chemotherapy and this is like phase two of yeah. his cancer treatment. So mm -hmm. his treatment is supposed to span over 10 months. So he's done three months of aggressive chemotherapy. Very aggressive. Man. Very aggressive, which we'll get into. And then now he's going into the next phase, which is where they completely remove the tumor for his, from his leg, his left distal mm -hmm. femur and reconstruct everything basically moving around his muscles putting in like plastic and metal and fake bone and it's he's oh, gonna man. be like what are like i'm gonna be terminator. bionic yeah <laughs> like what I'm gonna, I'm gonna be bionic now oh you could join the avengers i know right? <laughs> <laughs> but yes yeah, it's, it's really scary it's it bittersweet scary. but it means that there's progress being made exactly and after the surgery we're gonna Say that he's 100% cancer free. So which, tomorrow. Which I'm completely looking forward to. Tomorrow. Forward to. Like the surgery is going to be 12 hours. Um, if everything goes well, 12 hours. Uh, I'm going to be and panicking. I You'll know, be right? sleeping, but. And uh, yeah, right? But the moment I wake up, like Fonta said, I'll be cancer free, which is a beautiful thing to think about. This is crazy. Although the journey isn't over. It's yes. like, it's. It's like seeing the cake before you get to eat it. Yeah. This tumor has been really responsive to chemotherapy. Yeah, thank God. So when we first started chemo, he had severe leg pain. He was like basically unable to walk, unable to like go to work or anything like I that. It was walk excruciating. The dog. I couldn't sleep. With it was a constant pain. It was. And as soon as he started chemo, like we started to see drastic change like and his ability to move his leg and go up the stairs but it came with a lot of side effects it did and the side effects were absolutely horrible something that you can't even necessarily explain it's this kind of massive hangover but it's all over your body you just feel horrible and it ruins your your gas your um gastrointestinal yeah intestinal your gastrointestinal system. <laughs> system your gi system your I've mind been, yeah your mind I've been, I've been having like this thing that they call chemo brain because of it sometimes i'm quite forgetful sometimes i you know forget what words to use yeah. sometimes i'm just out of focus and concentration I, uh, the fatigue was excessive and it was yeah. just really bad. Even just balancing work and going through chemotherapy, working full time. Pretty impossible, first of all. Yeah. That's pretty impossible. Like Sending emails was is so granted, difficult. Granted, even with chemo, like you would be admitted for weeks at a time too. So like not everything is outpatient. So yeah. he has some treatments that are outpatient where he gets mm -hmm. to come home the same day. But then he has another medication that he takes called methotrexate where... Um, he's getting like the highest dose of it and mm -hmm. he has to stay in the hospital for a week so that they can monitor like his liver functions and stuff yeah. like that. So that was a, that was really hard. I mean, it side effects hard. are hard, but also being locked and trapped in a hospital. Yeah. And away from you, away from, you know, our dog, Ceci, and, yeah. you know, not having access to the things that, you know, I would you like to have it. access to. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a very um, difficult mental and physical game. It's crazy you know. too now because it's even harder because like the whole panoramic like kind of mm -hmm. getting worse again like visitation like hospitals have like cracked mm -hmm. down on visitation and I don't work at this hospital so I don't have like VIP status I know, where I can right? just swoop in <laughs> since I'm a nurse. It doesn't matter that I'm a nurse in this hospital because it's not my hospital so that's so frustrating, it's very frustrating to just not be able to because I would be there 24 7 like I can't spend the night with him. I can't like all I can do is just come bring him everything he needs for the day and just like i don't know my heart breaks every and you time just hope that i'm okay right i could it's, like it's, literally it's, cry every time he's admitted it's uh. it's, it's it's horrible I, I wake up in the mornings and and then i just wait for Fonta to come and the moment she comes she just burns up my day i don't know if you've seen the living with cancer video but if you watch that video you just know how much Fonta holds it down you hold it down too though this man is the strongest man i know well, to be going through all of these symptoms well, you know, and you still know. look look at us we have a smile on our face i mean god is good god is 
always good you know but it's just like he is so strong to go through all of these symptoms just seeing like how you're unable to eat how your mouth starts to feel funny how your stomach the gas the bloating how your nails change your hair yes guys my nails have changed colors they like started to turn black because yeah. chemo destroys all the fast growing cells in your body. Mm -hmm. So the nails, of course, start yeah. to turn black because they're breaking. His palms are also darker. Yeah. Um, of course, yeah. his hair like has not grown mm -hmm. back. It's like he's been waxed, literally. Yeah, all over my body. Completely literally. Waxed. It's kind of convenient, but at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> no shaving. <laughs> But he's down to a couple lashes now, which I'm sure will be gone after his next round of chemo. We're just thankful it's, for the opportunity mm -hmm. to even, like cancer is no joke. It's not. Cancer is no joke. We're just grateful that we f we found a great hospital, a mm -hmm. great team of people, and that progress is being made, that mm -hmm. you've responded to chemo, and the next big feat is gonna be the surgery and just making sure everything runs smoothly. Cause you know, <laughs> I get scared when I think about surgery. I mean, they're going to cut him open. Like, yeah, it's crazy. The scariest part for me is going under. This is my first surgery. I've never had surgery before. And I'm just afraid of, you know, like the whole anesthesia process of going under. Yeah. Because, you know, you hear stories about people go under and then they can hear the surgeon. They can yeah. hear Yeah, and they the can't say anything. And again, they All right, let's not, anything. let's not fill up hearts with, with that kind of stuff. <laughs> I know, I try not to think about it, but those are the things that I'm low-key thinking about. Yeah, but we're in a good hospital. Yes. You know, we're in a place where yeah. we know they're going to make sure that exactly. you're okay. And if everything runs smoothly and everybody does their job, which they should, because we, we chose will. this we team. Will. Exactly, everything will be okay. Yeah. Um, I you see always, how good Fonta is at just keeping me <laughs> I always calm try to, <laughs> I always try to like just talk him down from like all of the crazy things he can think of because I have worked with cancer patients before in my job and I have also had surgery. I had scoliosis when I was younger. Well, I have scoliosis and I had to get a reconstructive surgery on my spine mm -hmm. where they put like rods and everything in, which was a huge surgery. Huge. So I always just try to let him know like, you know, everything is going to be okay. You know, I've gone through it. I've gone through anesthesia. I've gone through the, work, um, the wake up process. And I've also taken care of people who have gone through yeah. it. And I'm going to be there every step of the way. And you're so strong. And I just know you're going to come out. I mean, you're going to be cancer free, babe. Like, this is a solution. So, I mean, you know, the, the positives outweigh the negatives. And yeah. we're going to just keep being positive. That's it. We're going to keep <laughs> riding this journey. Yeah. Where we're pretty much almost there. And I'm, I'm so grateful for that fact. Me too. Um, and, you know, I just can't wait for, you know, the turning point, the turning point in our lives where we can really begin to leave this. And start to live. And, yeah, start to live a you know, a bit more worry-free, you know, get my hair back. <laughs> I know. He cannot wait to get his hair, get back. hair back. <laughs> the whole hair thing has like, been such a big um, insecurity for you. So. It has, it has. Even though this man is still handsome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. So, I mean, we're about to be there. And then after the surgery, we'll have six more months of chemo mm -hmm. just to make sure there's, if there's any, like, loose um, cells Mm -hmm. from the tumor that it's um, killed. Completely eradicated. Obliterated. Yeah. <laughs> Obliterated. <laughs> and, you know, I would just like to say, too, like, if you're watching this, definitely go to, you know, see a primary care physician. If you have any pain, any ailment, don't ignore it because, you know, you never know what it could be. You never or know how it serious be. it could be. I have no history of cancer in my family, my, except for my grandfather, who is 101. And, and just got diagnosed and he with just it. just got prostate cancer when he was like 99. 99. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm literally the first. Um, and I thank God that I, when I actually felt this pain that I went in to check it out. I thank God that and pain was even a symptom for yes. him. Because for a lot of people, pain is not even a symptom. And when you finally find out, it's too late. But because you had the pain, it mm -hmm. lit a fire in you to go to get go. seen. And thank God you went to the right place mm -hmm. and they did the right test and they found the right diagnosis because Lord knows Things what it could have ended up different. being. Yeah. So, so just go. Just, yeah. you know, you go to your yearly check if you can. Even if you think you're the most healthiest person in the world, they mm -hmm. say that he's like the... He's like, they, it was so unexpected because he lives such a healthy lifestyle. You know, you work out, you eat right, you know, we're very health conscious, but mm -hmm. he still ended up with osteosarcoma, even though it's not even in his family. So yeah. it's just, you really, you never, you know. never know. So just make sure 
Yeah. You take care of yourself. Take care of your health, mm -hmm. you know? Definitely. <laughs> We're going to keep you guys updated on his cancer journey. You know, we still do have some time left. So, yeah, we're going to we're going to vlog tomorrow. We're going to vlog his yeah. his um and we spoke to surgery the surgery day. You know, we spoke to the surgeon and hopefully, you know, they can get, they can get some nice clips. Yeah. Surgeon says she has a GoPro and she's going to try to you know, show us the good parts from the surgery. <laughs> so if anything, we'll share that with you guys. If you guys like this content, make sure you leave a like. Drop a comment. Subscribe and turn on that notification bell. Absolutely. And thank you for following us on this journey and supporting us. We really do appreciate it. We do. So stay tuned. <laughs>